two issues. The one is labor. When we came uh, previously, you were speaking about restructuring the South African operations, taking seven and bringing them down to a far fewer number. This resulted in uh, Num saying there's going to be blood on the streets, there are going to be people retrenched. On top of that, we hear Teba saying that they hear that the workers are a little bit dissatisfied in the gold sector and that they see platinum after having gone on a five-month strike in a sweeter spot. And this is creating a bit of um, sort of anxiety about wanting more with the upcoming talks. What we have done with support of organized labor have actually had mass meetings across every one of our mine sites over a period of eight days. It's uh, AGA, um, we have NUM as the as still as the dominant um, union, um, with AMCU being um, in, in second position. Um, we have said previously that AMCU dominate by quite a big percentage our, our West Wits operations, whilst NUM dominates um, in the Vaal River. If I can give you a bit of colour about what we're seeing um, for 2015 and obviously the upcoming wage negotiations, <coughs> The, the gold CEOs are, are working together with the Chamber of Mines, um, um, developing the strategy and, and the tactics ahead of this set of wage negotiations. At the moment, we're trying to influence the things that we can. Uh, it's our employees who decide whether to strike and um, how long that strike is essentially going to be. And those are the people we need to influence. Uh, I think. You know, I, I don't know when I've heard of or seen a CEO um, and COO address a mass meeting. Venkat's done that across every single one of our operations um, with some frank talk and allowing people to ask the questions that they need to ask. The engagement processes that the rest of, of us are following um, are trying to give our employees a sense of what's real. In other words, they get information from more than one source. So two streams of work, engagement with our employees, and then a set of engagements via the CEOs with um, regulators, the department, and the union leadership themselves. We opened up unlimited time for Q&A. So we don't put an end for the questions and answers. Complete unlimited time was opened up where everybody asked questions. They got answers honest answers, it may not be answers everybody would want to hear, or politically correct answers, but certainly they got uh, a fair uh, response, and the feedback we have had in that regard has been quite encouraging. So we're still optimistic that the dialogue will continue, and we'll have to wait and see. And just on progress of going from seven to a far fewer yeah. number of uh, units? With regard to uh, the operations, what we have done is successfully integrated Savuka into Tautona. We have now also integrated Great Naligua into Moab, the next focus is going to be on Val River. With regard to Westwitz, we'd probably take uh, longer given the challenges which we currently face from a safety front at Imponang. So that we will have to monitor as time goes by. But good progress in that regard. Sibanya has decided to build its own power station. Do you have any such ambitions? At this stage, from everything we have looked at in building our own power stations, we continue to evaluate those options. Those things actually don't deliver the return or the outcome uh, which we expect. So at this stage, it's certainly not uh, top of our priority list. We do have standby generator sets that really kick in for safety reasons when we need to evacuate uh, our colleagues down from underground operations. The focus right now is keeping the group together and progressing in terms of our actions to <coughs> deliver the best value from within the portfolio.